Okay, today we're going to be showing uh, how to weld some of the right ways of acrylic welding and some of the wrong ways. Uh, first, we're going to start off by moving our panel to the laser line under the clamp and the weld roller. So on this piece of equipment, it is very important that the material is lined up straight, clamped down, then vacuumed so it will not move while the head carriage is welding it down. Second, we're going to take our acrylic tape here and we're going to feed it into our guide. We'll take a short second, bring this through, making sure that our tape is staying straight. It's coming straight down from the dispenser and wrapping around in a nice 45 so it will not form any binds. If it forms a bind, it may break. Second, we're going to bring the panel in, slide it down on top, put the weld roller down, the second fabric clamp. Now I'm going to straighten my panel up past my laser line. Before I start to weld, I'm going to take my tape and I'm going to pull some tension on it. I'm making sure that my tape down at this angle is not sagged down so my nozzle does not hit it. I want it nice and tight so the nozzle comes in freely and starts to weld. Right. For acrylic welding, uh, there's a couple important things to, uh, to check and to make sure of uh, before you actually start welding and before you get your settings, as in your heat speed and pressure. Uh, the first thing I'm going to show you is the tape alignment. Your tape is going to be mounted on a dispenser. It is going to come off perpendicular to your material that you line up. You need to make sure that your tape is feeding off of the roll very loosely how it's coming. If for some reason this is too tight and it's sticking and it's coming off, it's going to cause friction and a bond. And if you're too hot with your material, you may break your tape in the middle. The second thing I'm going to look at is my guide. I want to make sure that my material feeds over my guide, nice and square, then it's going to fold over the guide in a 45. I'm going to slide my tape through the guide, pulling it out underneath. So the thing that you want to look for is you want it, the tape to be positioned to come straight off of here and straight down, wrap in a 45 and flow through the guide nice and smooth. If this is adjusted wrongly, if this is moved all the way up, if you notice, I'm coming out of my dispenser in an angle twisting my tape which is going to cause the tape to have a bind on it which could cause the tape to break while we're welding down. If it's adjusted too far this direction what may happen is your tape may completely miss your guide or come down in an angle. So what we want again is we want your tape to be basically lined up so it's sm flowing smoothly straight down, wrapping around this guide in a nice 45. You should be able to grab the tape under the weld roller. And when we pull on it, you should feel hardly no friction pulling through your fingers under the guide with the weld roller up. That is a great proper position for your tape. Okay, the next important thing to check before we start welding, before we get our heat, speed, and pressures, is basically our nozzle position. If you look right here at the nozzle, if you can see, I am positioned correctly onto that weld roller. I am about an eighth of an inch off of the weld track, and I am about a quarter of an inch back from the weld roller. And where I'm referencing the weld roller is actually the pinch point, which is where the weld roller makes contact with the weld track. That is a perfect spot for this nozzle. Now if my nozzle was too low and I can adjust it right here, I can adjust this counterclockwise and it takes my nozzle too low. If we can see that the nozzle moved down, if this is too low what happens is, is we're rubbing the acrylic material. We're heating it up a lot and we're possibly making the acrylic smooth. We do not want to do that because we do not want to affect the acrylic material. We want to penetrate the heat through the tape to get the tape very sticky to bond to the fibers in the acrylic material. If we burn the acrylic material and make it shiny, our tape will adhere less to the, to the acrylic than what it will if it's not uh, smooth or shiny. 
So that is a bad position for the, for the nozzle to be in. Secondly, if the nozzle is set too high, as in almost touching the weld roller, what will happen is the nozzle will swing in and it will break our tape. It will heat the tape too much and break it or it will just actually hit the tape and snap the tape right off the beginning and you have witnessed that in one of our examples of the nozzle swinging in and breaking the tape at the beginning. So the point that I want this nozzle to be at again is like an eighth of an inch off the weld track squared up on the nozzle from side to side and about a quarter of an inch back from the pinch point. One thing you want to do is make sure that you're always checking your nozzle placement. It could move throughout the day. But all I'm doing here is making sure that my material is staying in my guide and I'm watching that my tape keeps moving and that will tell me that it did not break. Most of the time your tape will not break though. Now I'm going to cut my tape. I do not want to return my head carriage unless my tape is cut. Then hit return run, take it back to the beginning. Alright, so after we weld our first weld, we're going to do a test piece to basically see if our acrylic tape is bonding correctly. So the way to do that is to peel it apart here. So I'm going to grab it with my two fingers and I'm going to peel. And what I am looking for, as you start to see, is I want to see like a bubble gum effect all the way across. And if we look down through here, we'll see that little bit of a bubble gum effect right there. Okay. The bottom piece here, you can see that um, we're still getting the bubble gum. We may be, uh, we may need just a little bit more heat to penetrate there. Um, however, it looks pretty good. Now, if you notice on the top side here, we cannot even peel this apart. And that is because the nozzle comes in underneath the tape. So that means the heat has to go through the tape to get to the top half of it, okay? On this weld, what we're going to be demonstrating is we increase the speed at about 6%. So what we're going to show you is a weld that is not hot enough for the tape. You can tell, you can greatly see how much faster the head carriage is running. Um, so that will equal out to a colder seam. Okay, so we will be doing a peel test again to see uh, what it's going to look like and to make sure it's welded. Again, we suggest doing this before you do any large job. Do a small, quick piece just like this size to see if it's welded or not. So I'm going to grab it, I'm going to pull it. If you notice, it's really easy to peel. There's not that bubble gum or ripping taste, tension. It's easier to peel right here. We get this off, and if you notice, there's no, there's no real bubble gum effect. It's coming off very easy, okay? So that would mean that I would either have to uh, slow it back down or heat it up. One rule of thumb I like to do is I like to get to a relatively somewhat lower temperature, but keep a speed that I, that I like to run at. And then what I'll do to get my weld is I will adjust my speed, not my temperature. Okay, so on, on this piece here, we've actually slowed it down uh, 2% to increase the heat to get a, uh, a better bond with the tape to the acrylic. Again, I'm just watching my material, making sure it's, it's going through the guide nice and straight. My tape's not binding up, causing any binds so my tape would break. Uh, just allowing the material to feed through my hands in a straight line. Okay, so we finished welding uh, this at a 2% slower speed to reduce the, to bring up the heat. So now I'm going to test it again and make sure that I'm getting a good bond. So I'm going to start pulling, and if you notice, I'm getting this bubblegum look, and I ripped it across there. And if we notice here, we got a little bit more 
adhesion to the bottom panel. That is what we are looking for on a good weld here. Okay, so right here we're gonna show you one thing that basically our nozzle hit our tape at the beginning and it broke our tape. So if you notice here, I slide this back. I can return our head. And when I peel this back this direction, you'll notice that my tape started right here, but it broke. Basically what that is showing is my nozzle either touched my tape or I'm not moving fast enough at the beginning to start my weld. So I will make a couple adjustments. I'm going to check my nozzle placement to make sure my nozzle can slide in without hitting my tape. If that is the problem, then I will adjust my nozzle. If it is not, I am going to adjust my heat and I will either cool it down or speed it up. A couple things to remember about acrylic welding. After you do your wedge adjustments and everything is set up perfectly, run a small practice piece. 12 inches, uh, 18 inches, just run a small piece, check your welds. Uh, your darker materials, your hunter greens, your navy blues, your blacks are probably going to take a little more heat or less speed than like a light green or a, a, a light blue or a white. Always, always, always do a practice weld and check it. Make sure you're getting a weld before you start any job.